Hey, Scott Foster. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We are in your studio about yeah. an, an hour west of Portland, Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Near the Egg Lake. Look at this gorgeousness. This big, beautiful studio full of sculptures, yeah. which is what you do. It's true. And we're, you said you're going to give me a tour. Where should we start? That's up to you, my good man. Oh, well. Uh, okay. Currently working on a piece for my uh, friend B. Jiju who is a, a painter, lives in Portland, Oregon, and uh, we've been good friends for a long time. He's having a show um, in London in March, and he wanted me to uh, make one of his characters uh, into a sculpture. So this is a quarter scale model of what the um, final piece is going to be. Um, so this is the first step, kind of working out the forms and the shape of bringing his two-dimensional painting into 3D and then I'll take it from here and I'll um, laminate a bunch of foam together, weld up some armatures for the legs and then I'll carve the foam and coat it with uh, epoxy resins and so it will be a lightweight but durable little sculpture. So you just mentioned, let me let me try to list it what, you got foam, you got metal, uh -huh. you got, you you're obviously working in clay uh -huh. and this is normal for you. You yes. are a multi faceted fabricator. Yes, I, I work in many materials. And you do it for a lot of different kinds of, of people and organizations, yeah? Yeah, I went to University of Oregon. Um, I moved back to Minneapolis and got involved doing special effects and props for commercials. Um, it was before digital, so everything was done practically. You know, modeled this or full overscaled that or whatever needed to be done, um, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when I moved back to Oregon, I got in with um, Will Vinton Studios and making characters for stop motion. And there's lots of different materials used for that. So I just kind of learned all the different materials through other jobs and stuff. Yeah. Right on. Well, let's continue the tour. Um, I'm doing a foosball, custom foosball team. Um, oh, nice. This is going to be for the Rock, Rockefeller Foundation and their new offices. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of, this is a generic guy, but then there'll be uh, the Rockefeller, um, John Rock Rockefeller, John Jr., Albert Einstein, uh, Maya Angelou, um, a bunch of people that are going to be portraiture um, foosballers. And they're so. going to be spinning on the yeah. <laughs> on the rods, so kicking them. I'll be casting them out of out of, out of a hard plastic. That's so cool. Yeah. So we've already gone from what medium large to to very very small. Yeah. Very yeah. Tiny. And then we have all sorts of other goodness. Yeah. Uh, I did these big ones for Travel Portland um, about five six years ago now. What else? What else do you do for your own self? Um, right now I'm making beardos, kind of based off of the, um, I think it was Sumerian, uh, early, early um, art from the, from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I came up with this guy and wanted to do him. Uh, and so then I started, then I want to do a pendant version of the, um, Gonna, I want to cast him in, in clear um, acrylic or a, a translucent acrylic to make a, a light, have him hang from, oh, from the nice. ceiling to be a big light fixture, glowing with knowledge or whatnot. I find myself, because uh, I've worked in stop motion and in um, production, like I get really anal retentive if I'm making molds on things and it has to be smooth and perfect and like, uh, in stop motion, you know, you'll make something this big that's going to fill a whole screen. Mm. And so it has to be super clean and super precise. And that's kind of got me going down a rabbit hole so many times. And so I'm trying to break away from that with my own work and, and do things looser and, and more, um, more texture and more just getting it out. Just some really quick, loose portrait busts. This guy blew up in the kiln because I rushed him a little too much. So he's lost most of his face. Oh, so we're finding, yeah, we're finding the, the balance. Yeah. Um, but then nice, loose uh, the conversations. 
you know right. so i wanted to keep them like different expressions like they're like caught halfway through thinking or saying something or being smug with themselves or you know like uh but keep them loose and, and moving like in a conversation right yeah. how so how do you um how do you get a good idea down like is there is it a sketch on paper is it a photo these i just smash? just started smash and play onto the armature and and kind of finding like you know where are the eyes where's where's the nose where's the chin and just then have it just come out as i'm working so you're directly working out the idea on the clay yeah no with awesome. no with no like is he smiley is he sad like it's kind of like what i'm feeling at the time right and then, and, and then and then as you just mentioned with the red one for you know extra example right like yeah. the process itself leads you to this one you didn't throw it out even though it broke no i believe i believe in process i'm a very process oriented person and um you know i i, I made these fast and, and they have cracks from drying and firing and i think that's part of making making things by hand you know if, if people want things perfect they can have a computer print it out and mm. make it perfect um, that's not me. You're not a 3D printer. I'm not a 3D printer. I'm a, I'm a human being, and I'm using materials from the world to, to create something, and sometimes it cracks. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I embrace that. So what well, what does go on? What's the process of embrace? Because I imagine you have, you know... I, I used to have um, problems, like if something came out broken, I'd be like, oh, it's garbage now, it's no good, or I have to, I have to repair it, I gotta get the Bondo out and change it completely. And I'm past that in mm. my life. I think I think it's part of the piece. It becomes part of the story. It's part of the process. Like it, that it cracked because of what we did to make it what it is, you know. And, and that can be embraced so, and and not uh, vilified for not being perfect. It isn't your idea. It's the actual object, and you're there to serve the object in front of you. Is yeah. that what I'm hearing? Let it let it be what it is, and not try to make it what I'm. Not force it into being something else. Yeah. You know, let, like so. I, I got it to the one stage, and then it, it is what it is. So he's just one session in. One session in. Just from from armature and play on. So th when did you do this? Monday, two days ago. What are you thinking now as you look at it again? I want to get out. I want to get out of here. I got to work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some ears. He needs uh, eyeballs. You know, find out where the beard's going. Let's go outside and I'll yeah. show you my uh, what I'm doing out there. It's forest right out there. Um, when I got here, it was like growing into here. It was a um, I'm currently working on a banister um, for a private home. This is the the mock-up of their stairwell. So, ah. So this will be the first newel post, and then it will branch to the second, third, fourth, and it ties into their wall up there. So the nice. stairs will be right here. Before the child came along. I was working, starting to work larger, um, larger steel, and uh, but I ran out of space for them in my old place. But now I have more room to put them, and so um, uh, so I'm gonna do that again. I think this uh, winter cat pile. So this is kiln zone. Kiln zone. Um, just got that built this year and wired up, so i um, excited to make more things ceramic. This is closed up for winter, but, but I'm hoping to um, kind of make a nice patio area and workspace out here too oh, in the future. But uh, that's the future. Yeah, this place, I can't believe it's only been two years. For all my crap. You've done <laughs> so much goodness yeah. in two years. This door. Office area. The next, uh, um, I was working here late summer because I could cool down one room. Wow, it really does just keep going. It does. This room is my resin room. I'd like to have it sealed off 
from the rest of the building so I can have things curing in here without uh, um, having uh, to breathe any of it. Yeah, what kind of resins are we talking about? Mostly epoxy resins, but some polyurethanes and, and all, all the resins, whatever. I need. <laughs> Those are no joke. Yeah, you just want to wear respirators, but uh, it's nice to have a spot that I can still close off the door. I just want to have it separate from that room too, so it's just this room. Kind yeah. Of yeah. So. Oh, beautiful. This is, yeah, this is amazing. You got yes. so much, I don't know, potential energy yeah. coming yeah. In, in, in this whole just complex. to clean. <laughs> I guess you could look at it that way. <laughs> well, that's when I see this, I'm like, oh, I didn't clean up very well. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And the then the artist room, in his element. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of just like uh, I'm using this to like as mold prep and clean up area for for kind of resin castings and stuff. I'm working on a piece uh, like the um, fawns. Um, it's a long story. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just being very frustrated with these. This one I did as a kind of a proof of concept for the big guys, for the client. Oh. Um, and so wanted to do larger fawns. And so then it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I got this rotocast machine. I'm gonna make a bigger, <laughs> even bigger head and be able to cast a hard shell and then have it filled, um, filled with foam to make it a solid piece and then add antlers and, and whatnot too and I have a whole list of things I want to make them into <laughs> but um, having in my brain it was going to be a lot easier to make them originally oh. <laughs> and now it's not and so it's been frustrating isn't that how it is right yeah it's like not everything is is the success you want it to be in the the uh, ease that it comes like oh yeah that concept's gonna be great so easy but no it's it's sometimes frustrating and and like that's this, I got my 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 time this week to work on my piece, and it's and it's not working. <laughs> I mean that kind of thing. I think I so regularly experience that as a painter. You yeah. know, like oh, in my mind it's like this, and then as soon as I start doing the thing, it's yeah. you know, it's of course three more steps than I thought, or yeah. back up and start over completely. Yeah, exactly. Like there's it's, there's no uh, guidebook to creating something out of the ether you know so it's like sometimes you're like oh yeah it's gonna go great i have the experience i have this i got the knowledge this is gonna be no yeah <laughs> fail <laughs> <laughs> so there's that <laughs> well this is fantastic yeah that's a full uh, rounded tour yeah we did, literally went around yeah. we did a nice circle yeah. this is great